This conference will now be recorded. Cool. Okay. So yeah. here we go, folks. Let's see. Um, let me just pull up the agenda so I follow along with what we're doing here. Uh, does anybody have anything additional to add to the agenda from what you received in the packet? Not hearing any, then we'll go with the agenda as it's written. Thank you very much. Um, January 18th, review and acceptance of the minutes from January 18th, 2021. After reviewing that information that was sent to us by Rachel, um, does anybody have any additions, deletions, corrections from the meeting of January 18th? Okay. Can I get a motion to accept the minutes as we received them from Rachel for January 18th? Thank you, Deb. Seconded? Was there a second? Okay, seconded. Melanie seconded. And um, all in favor? All right, anybody abstaining or not? Or, or, or opposed. All right, so we have accepted our minutes from the January 18th, 2021 meeting. We're on to item number four. And as you, if you looked at the agenda, you, you notice that we are gonna take a little detour so that Christine doesn't have to uh, sit through all of our, um, not that she wouldn't mind sitting through it, I'm sure, but um, nonetheless, we're going to talk about uh, the long range planning committee report, so to speak. And Christine Carpenter is going to tell us about that. So I'm going to turn the meeting over to her if she doesn't mind. I don't mind. Joe, did you want to set this up at all? Or did you want me to just jump in? Uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll set it up just a little bit so that we don't have to come mm -hmm. back to it later. Um, a uh, Good evening, guys. Hi, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining us on uh, a... Uh, uh, on President's Day, I'm, I'm I'm glad that you took time away from your President's Day celebrations um, to uh, to join us. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the Long Range Plan, uh, and um, for those of you who haven't been involved in our Long Range Planning process in the past, um, it's kind of uh, it's something that we do every three years. Uh, we are going to be uh, over the course of the next year being we're going to create. Um, our third long-range plan, our current long-range plan, uh, covers the years 2019 to 2021. Uh, so the next uh, three-year plan will cover 2022 to 24. Over the course of the year, we're going to, um, I, I sent around the, the current long-range plan, which everybody's seen before that, uh, before before tonight. And um, it's uh, it's an important document. Um, it's an important document. It is a, a necessary document. It's something that the uh, the Division of Library Development, New York State, basically uh, requires uh, all public libraries to have. Um, and it's an aspirational document. It sort of sets in stone some uh, some of our goals and objectives. Um, and it's a, a great opportunity to uh, to get in touch with our community. Um, and uh, Christine is going to uh, hopefully talk a little bit about how we plan on doing that over the next year. We had our first meeting, the committee, the Long Range Planning Committee, uh, which is this year uh, Christine, uh, Deb, uh, Katie Barker, uh, and myself. And uh, I thank you all for, uh, for joining the committee. Uh, this is the first time that the committee has been more than uh, uh, basically Christine and I. Um, uh, although maybe the first time there was uh, there was a little bit more, uh, but this is great to to have so much uh, so much trusty input, um, and um, so yeah that's that's what we're planning on doing over the next year is uh, collecting our community's input, uh, asking them what they want from our uh, from their library, um, what are we doing well, what could we be doing better, um, how can we uh, how can we think differently about um, the different communities that we serve, and how can we outreach to people that we're not uh, currently uh, having uh, uh, through our doors. So um, with that, why don't, Christine, why don't you uh, talk a little bit about um, our data collection process and the, the, the timeline that we're going to be working on over the next year. Happy to. Um, and thank you, everybody, for um, allowing me to be part of the committee. Um, I actually do enjoy this work on behalf of the library. Um, we um, are intending to use the next, actually, 
you know, you know, probably 10, 10 months to, to get you to a place where you're ready to vote on, on your long range plan for the next three years. Um, I checked in with Joe and I believe that our um, long range planning committee is going to be meeting with Tim Burke um, from Upper Hudson in March. We thought that it would be a really good idea to, to review the long range plan along with him. Um, particularly given the circumstances that, that we're living in and the library's operating in right now. Um, the committee, the long range planning committee, when it met, um, kind of all agreed that this is an opportunity for all of you to get some sort of immediate feedback, things that might be more like short term, long term feedback that could be immediately useful given the fact that the pandemic is still ongoing and operations are, are just very limited as a result or, or just very different as a result. Things that would be um, immediately able to be put into action on, on behalf of the community. Um, and then also at the same time, get the feedback that you're going to want for that long range planning down the road. Um, but we really wanted to sort of pick Tim's brain about that. Also go over the long range plan as it exists um, and really look at what's been able to be accomplished. And when I, I was in touch with Joe, I said, it's very, very understandable that, as Joe said, it was an aspirational document, um, but no one, when this was crafted three years ago, had any idea that we'd all be living and operating in, in the situation that we're living in now. This was this was something we didn't necessarily know we had to, to plan for. Um, and so things by necessity have just been put on the back burner. Some of them are even just, been, they're, they're not even practical or even relevant to the times. So we're gonna take a look as a long range planning committee at, at the document and then to look at it with Tim as well to see what you as a board may want to roll over into the next three years. It might be something that you feel is really important and needs to get pushed forward. Um, and, and that would be actually the start of a, a long range plan. But then what, might you want to rethink or reimagine? What last time around, and I, I, I really believe that the goal here is to figure out what you want to know before you decide on the um, the tools to use to gather that information. Um, what we did previously, and it worked really successfully, I, I believe, um, was create an online survey. The first time we did the the first formal long range plan six years ago. Um, the online survey wasn't as well received, um, but this last go around, a lot of folks weighed in using that tool. And when it was created, we created it in late spring and let it remain open through the summer into the beginning of August, um, just believing that it would give people a lot of opportunity to, to weigh in that way. Um, the other thing that we utilized, and I can imagine us wanting to use again in some form is um, the community forums. Um, I don't believe that it's going to be a possibility, a safe possibility for us to gather folks to, to talk with them the way that we have in the past. In the past, we did a, new, a couple of those conversations where we invited people from the community to come in um, and just weigh in on a series of questions uh, face to face. And so I'm imagining either we will do that once the weather is more accommodating and we could potentially sit outside yes, at a social distance um, or on the patio or do it in this sort of a format. I think a lot of folks are accustomed to this sort of a format and Maybe. it can be done. You wanna do that, Dick? You wanna be the one who leads that? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Glad you're all set up, Dick. Thanks for joining us. Dick, we're just uh, we're talking a little bit about uh, the long range planning process. You've been part of two of these now, um, and so you're an old hand. This is all this is all stuff you know. But Christine is uh, talking a little bit about um, uh, the process that we're going to go through over the next year to create the next long range plan. Okay. Good. One of the other things that we used, and I think it would be really useful, particularly since the board now has a number of, of new members, is um, 
in, in all likelihood, this will happen at a dedicated meeting, possibly in August, um, when we do a focus group um, asking a lot of questions of, of all of you to get your feedback about what you believe is the future of the library and what needs to be done to get the library from here to there. Um, so your input matters too. So we'll do a dedicated focus group in some way with the, with the board itself. And um, then uh, have uh, the committee come back together, the long range planning committee come back together and draft a document for you all to, to weigh in on. Um, given the, the timing of things such as your budget planning and, um, and the end of the year, generally what we, we um, aim for is having that document ready for the November meeting so that you all can have it in advance, think about it and discuss it at that meeting and then bring it back for a formal vote if there aren't objections or things that need to be significantly changed in it for in December so that you'll begin the um, the next year with your long range plan intact. Did I hit that everything Joe? Yeah, that's a that's a good uh, overview. Does anybody have any questions about the the long range planning process? Good. Uh, so um, Christine may join us uh, a couple of times between now and November. Um, uh, I may ask if she if she can. Um, uh, but uh, for right now, I'm just going to say thank you very very much, Christine, uh, and thank you to to Deb and to Katie um, for um, for all of the the work that we're going to be putting into this. It's going to be fun. Yeah. It, it it is going to be fun, and I think real. Um real interesting to see where the community believes the library um, is right now and what role it plays in, in their lives because I think it's different than it was a year ago. Thank you all. I hope you all are well and I look forward to working with you this year. Christine. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's move on then. Um, unless anybody else has any other comments or questions they want to make about long range planning. Not that you would have waited for Christine to leave, but just in case you have anything that just came to mind. Not hearing any, um, we'll move on to the director's report. That would be you, Mr. Burke. All right. Um, just because there's a little bit of uh, noise that I hear in the background, um, I am going to delete or I'm going to uh, mute some folks. Um, all right, that's a little bit better. Thank you. Okay, so um, just pulling it up for myself. Okay, so uh, it was uh, actually a pretty good month for circulation. If you look at uh, the uh, the circ numbers, um, we are at about four fifths of last January's. Uh, circulation, which is I, actually a really, really great place to be, um, and the best sort of proportionally that we've been um, in, you know, in the past 10, 11 months. Um, so I'm really encouraged by that. I, I do think that there is, a, you know, a growing appetite um, for, uh, you know, for for uh, for library services, and we'll obviously talk about that a little bit more in, uh, when we get to uh, uh, the reopening piece of it. Uh, one thing that I do want to bring to everybody's attention is uh, NILA Advocacy Day. Um, normally, this would be an in-person gathering um, with rallies in the, uh, at the, the Legislative Office Building at the New York State Capitol. Um, uh, and obviously, it's going to be uh, very different. It's going to be a, uh, an entirely online event this year. There is going to be a role um, uh, for, for any trustees that might be interested in uh, participating. The meetings that we're going to have with our legislators uh, will have a role for um, as many as uh, basically there's going to be one person speaking on behalf of each library, whether that's me or whether that's uh, that's one of you. Um, we can work that out, um, uh, but there can be as many as two people uh, attending each meeting from each library. Um, so anybody who wants to participate in those meetings, please let me know. Just reach out, send me an email, send me a text. 
um, and uh, we can uh, we can get that going. That's going to be on February 26th, Friday, February 26th, not this coming, but the following. Uh, the big asks this year, it's a weird year, it's a weird budget year. Um, it's maybe a better budget year than we were concerned that it was going to be. Um, you may recall a couple of weeks ago we were talking about, or a couple of months ago we were talking about Nyla building a budget around a perceived, um, not Nyla, but uh, Upper Hudson creating their budget around an anticipated 20% reduction um, that was going to have a number of trickle down effects. We were going to have to, you know, we were only going to get deliveries a few days a week. Um, every member of their staff took a 20%, uh, no, a 10% uh, salary reduction. Um, so the, uh, the, 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 the budget that we're getting from the state, or at least the preliminary um, governor's version of the budget, which is not final, um, but it's kind of a baseline from which we work. We've never seen it. The numbers, our numbers go down from what the governor proposes. It always goes up. Um, so uh, what we're looking at at this point is about a 7% reduction in overall state aid for libraries from 87 million to 94 million. Um, and that, that still is difficult for uh, Upper Hudson to absorb, but it can be absorbed without um, these, those two big effects of having, um, of having to reduce um, the courier service from five days a week to you know, two or three days a week for small libraries. Um, the big libraries would still get five days a week, of course, um, but uh, we would have gotten knocked down to two or three, but that's not going to happen now, so that's good. Um, and the uh, the Upper Hudson, the very hardworking Upper Hudson staff um, is having their salaries um, uh, reset to last year's level and having um, whatever they missed out on in the first several weeks of this year um, uh, back, back paid, which is good. However, um, you know that that reduction does make it uh, make it very difficult for, um, and every year that we we don't you know we don't increase um, what uh, we're getting from the state for library aid is a year that we're essentially taking a reduction. Um, we are about fifteen percent off what New York State law, um, which we sometimes refer to as full formula funding, um, would say libraries should be getting, um, and. Uh, the amount of service, the level of service um, that we're able to provide um, is directly impacted by that. So that's what we're going to be advocating for. Um, there's also a substantial discrepancy between um, what is needed uh, for uh, for construction aid, which is not necessarily something that uh, impacts us this year, but for sure that was something that um, made all of the difference in the world uh, when we were uh, going through our renovation project from 2005 to 2012. Um, that funding, there's uh, about a billion dollars in pent up demand for uh, library construction aid, um, and they've advocated or, or they're allocating 14 million this year. So that's that's a pretty big discrepancy, um, and uh, and it's it's down from 20 million that we got last year. So that's another big thing that we're going to be advocating for. There's some smaller bills, but those are the big ones. Um, if anybody would like to participate, please let me know. Um, I did send around a couple of um, a couple of petitions related to uh, urging the um, the governor to um, and the state health department to uh, classify library workers as uh, Group One B um, in the vaccination scheme. Uh, it, we'll, we'll see we'll see where that goes. But that would be if you had a few minutes to uh, to sign off on that, I would be very grateful. Couple of things that I'm working on. Uh, the uh, the state report uh, it's coming along pretty well. Um, we've been a little bit disappointed in what we're able to count uh, and not count. Uh, so, for example, um, when we look at um, things like um, you know visits to the library, um, you know the door count, basically. Um, well, it's kind of an open question as to whether um, grab and go visits curbside. Um, service counts as a library visit. Um, it would stand to reason to me that that would count, but um, uh, but apparently it does not. So as a result, when you see our numbers, they're going to be off by orders of magnitude from you know from where we were last time. And that's not just the circulation; that's the that's the number of people coming through the door um, for you know for copies for 
you know, for using the computers, for uh, for browsing, for story times, for programs, um, it's going to be a very small number. It is what it is. The state gets to define that um, the the statistics that they want in the way that they want to, um, and we really don't have any power over that. But um, it is really disappointing the narrowness of their view of what it is we do. Um, so that is something that I'm working on. Oh, sorry. What did they oh. use this for? Oh, so okay. Well, yeah. So the what do they use it for? Um, the statistics. What do they use? What do they use it for? Uh, <laughs> what is the state? I mean, yeah. Like in comparison to other libraries, we'd be the same, right? I mean, we everyone's are in the same situation. We are impacted in the same way, uh, given the choices that we've made about the level of service that we've been uh, that we've offered over the past. Um, over the past year, um, other libraries who uh, stayed open longer, or you know, um, uh, you know, who, who reopened earlier, or had um, in-person browsing, in-person programming, um, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna have higher numbers. Uh, they're gonna have a higher door count. Um, one of the ways that this impacts us is <laughs> our start, which it seems petty to. To, to complain about it or to worry about it is uh, these are these are the numbers that the um, that uh, the Institute of Museum and Library Sciences um, or Services uh, looks at when they uh, allocate uh, library journal stars. So we're probably not going to be getting a a, a, a we're not going to be a star library two years from now when um, when awards are ad, you know are allocated for this year. So again, seems kind of petty. What else does the state do with it? I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know. Um, uh, but it, it is something that uh, that we we spend a lot of time on. Uh, we need to spend a lot of time on it. They make a lot of demands uh, of us. Um, if you were to print out the report, it comes out to about like that. Um, so it's it's a lot. The other uh, big thing that we are uh, that I am working on um, for the same same deadline, um, also from the state, is a new thing uh, which the state is calling a pandemic operations plan. Um, that is, we are required to have that in place by April first. Um, uh, it needs to be on file with our library system with Upper Hudson, um, and that's going to be another it's going to be another thick one. Um, but I'm working on it. There's a, a template that um, that uh, the state provides um, in terms of the you know the questions that it needs to answer. It, it's 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 um, it it goes into a lot more depth than what we've created so far. Um, it gets into issues of um, you know how are how are we how are we proposing to protect our essential workers in the event of um, basically what it envisions is a more serious pandemic than than what we've got going on here? Um, it you know it wants you know specific levels of uh, of PPE, um, you know vendors. Where is this all coming from? Um, what is your you know cleaning schedule? It wants all of that. So that is another thing that I'm going to be working on, um, and uh, I will have that for you to look at. Before our next uh, next meeting, have to. Is that what um, a one-time thing? Yes. Yeah. So you're saying so. This is for a theoretical future pandemic, not yeah, the I one mean, we're it, currently going through. Which is a little strange. It 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 is. Uh, I think. Um, I guess what it is is they have sort of uh, used their. Uh, the extraordinary powers of retrospect um, that they have um, to say what would have been useful if we had mandated that every library have in place, uh, you know, in in one year ago today, right? Um, so that's that's what they're that, that's what I'm working on. Um, uh, the uh, uh, the Albany Public Library they've already finished theirs. Theirs runs to nearly 100 pages. Um, they, they, it doesn't have to be that. Um, I, there's a, a Voorheesville have finished theirs. 
um, theirs runs to about uh, 30 pages. So I'm aiming for closer to 30 than 100. <clears throat> um, that's you know, kind of two, all. I, you know, two, yeah. two things. As I yeah. tell my students all the time, quality, not quantity, OK? In terms okay. of the, and yeah. in terms of the Star Library also, Joe, it's kind of like, you know, it'll be more fun if you don't win it every year. It's like when Clemson wins the national championship. You don't want them to win every year. So, you know, it's OK. Don't we don't win it, OK? <laughs> right. Um, right. Yeah, well, fair enough. Uh, as, as, as my favorite uh, professor in college said to me, um, you know, if it's if it's good, it can be as long as you want to make it. If it's bad, keep it as short as possible. Um, so um, I, I'm not aiming for bad, but I am aiming for uh, brevity. Good. So, um, so that's that's what I've got um, from my director's okay. report. There's other things that we'll talk about later on. But. All right. Thank you, Joe, very much. Thank you. <sighs> We're on to the treasurer's report, Melanie. Yes. Okay. I don't have a ton on the financials to um, this month, but if anybody has any questions or anything, um, definitely stop me along the way. I can only see, I'm on an iPad, so I can only see five people at a time. So you'll have okay. to just yell or <laughs> Joe or Dan can signal me. So um, the first statement, I was going to start with the statement of activity, oh, or we can start with statement of financial position. That's fine. Um, this statement just compares where we were. Oh, which one do you have, Joe? Where are you going? Okay. This January to December of last year, January to December. Um, looking down it, there was not a whole lot that changed in any of our accounts. Um, Let's see, Joe, I, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm gonna make sure we're on the right one. Are you on the, yep, that we're on the same. Okay, so any oh, questions sure. with, no, you're yeah. fine. I just yeah. wanted to make sure that I was doing the same one that you were, that I obviously had the same one in my hand that you did. So this just, the statement of financial positions just is a snapshot of where we are at um, the end of January compared to the end of December. So kind of what's changed in the last month. There was no big changes of any of our accounts. It was mostly just um, changes in the business checking and that was just of where we were with bill paying. So does anybody have any questions or anything that they saw come up in that statement? Okay, and then the next one I have is the statement of activity. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is going to compare this January to last January um, and where we were at. First of all, you will see that we have another $7,425, about a third down the page where it says other fundraising revenue. That is continuing um, checks coming in from the appeal. Um, the other thing is, if you will notice, let's see where it is, uh, about just about halfway down the page, our utilities are about 50% lower than last year for whatever, probably a multitude of reasons for that. Um, going down almost at the bottom, you'll see under library materials, we did have a large digital material purchase. That is the front payments for both Hoopla and Libby. So that is the $1,000, $1,037 that you'll see a little bit higher than last year at this time. Um, and then on the second page, there wasn't really much different that had happened. Of course, just some fundraising expenses, which I assume comes again from that appeal of $75 about halfway down the page. Does anybody have any questions on the statement of activity for January? Okay, and then finally, our budget versus actual. Um, we did have a question come up in the financial committee meeting on the municipal revenue that you see, and we do, Gilderland and Knox's are confirmed, um, and Altamont's request, Altamont goes on a July 1 financial year, so their request was just put in, and we will know, I believe, April how much we will be getting from them. So just kind of an update on where we are with the municipal revenue. And as far as other bu budget um, 
there was nothing that jumped out at me. We already talked about it, but you will see that the digital materials um, did have a large portion of our budget from that being used. But we said that is the front payment for those two. That's on the second page for those two digital subscriptions that we have. And that is all I have. Does anybody have any questions or concerns on any of our January financials? Melanie, just uh, as you mentioned a second ago, um, just this past week, uh, I put in uh, our uh, 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 our budget request to the village. Um, that the the deadline for that was the end of I guess this week, um, but they've got that now. Um, given that deadline, I would expect that sometime next week they'll have the uh, the budget workshop. Um, but I have not heard back from Catherine Hasbrook, um, the village treasurer, when that's going to be yet. Um, when whenever that happens, I'll let you all know. But I'll obviously be um, appearing at that, advocating for um, for our appropriation. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Any anybody else? Any other questions? Okay. Okay, so we need a motion to accept the treasurer's report. Um, can I get someone to make that motion? Thank you, Paul. And Dick seconded. Okay. And all in favor? And anybody abstaining or no? Okay. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Joe, for the reports. Uh, we are on to the committee reports. Um, the long range planning was the first, but we have, we've just, uh, question? No. Uh, so we're done with that. Um, let's see. Personnel committee did not meet. The program committee meet, Joe? Nope. No. Okay. Uh, building committee, Paul, anything to report? Nothing to report. All right. Thank you, sir. And finance committee, um, there's nothing else to report, correct, Melanie? Um, I guess it, maybe this is coming up later. We, um, Joe did put the budget on our website now, so um, the budget will be on there. Thank you for doing that, Joe. And we did authorize a credit card payment for workman's comp bill. And then I guess we just talked about Melia, which we're going to touch on later in the okay. agenda. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, and that brings us to the policy committee. And today's policy is computer and internet, if I'm not mistaken. It is, yes. Uh, so um, this was actually a policy that... Um, this has been worked on on and off for a while, has it not? Yeah, no, it has been. And this is one that we, we actually had worked on fairly recently. Um, and uh, we were in, in pretty good condition with... I'm sorry, I'm not, not finding it easily. Oh, here it is. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah. So um, I, I this required, uh, to my eye, fewer changes than uh, other policies that we've talked about um, recently. It's been uh, worked on more recently, um, and uh, I, I thought it was. It's been working pretty well for us. Um, there was one uh, area where Deb identified something in other libraries' policies that we didn't have, and that's basically uh, under the procedure section, this, this new section eight, that says that library staff will assist patrons with technical issues as their time and knowledge permit, but do not and cannot know every program, process, application, or device that patrons may have questions about and cannot offer more than limited and informal technical support. So the goal there is basically to set expectations amongst our patrons as to what we are able to help with and what we are not. Um, we do get, you know, lots of questions about using um, different devices. Can I fix this? Can I, you know, can I um, uh, older, you know, um, uh, e-readers from uh, the 90s or something like that um, that were created by companies that no longer support them or no longer exist. Um, there's just so much that we can do. We can, um, uh, so uh, 
um, that is the, the that is the new section there. But ultimately, the the you know the goal of this policy is to create a um, uh, is to create um, a, uh, a a common understanding amongst our patrons uh, and our users um, as to what is and what is not appropriate use and allowable use um, of our computers and our other technologies. One of the things that um, we added last time um, that I think is is still um, uh, kind of evergreen um, was this section number 11 under the uh, restrictions policy about the amount of bandwidth that um, that patrons may use. This is something that um, is one of the more commonly sort of used back in the older days. Um, this was something that we had to do from time to time which was that we needed to uh, dial back the amount of uh, available bandwidth to uh, uh, to patrons. Basically, we have such limited bandwidth um, that uh, if if somebody is you know is downloading um, you know terabytes of information or is uploading a a movie to their you know to their YouTube page, um, that's going to slow everything down. Everything from um, you know, from the wireless devices that the staff uses to uh, even, you know, even the wired devices. Um, so uh, at a certain point that begins to affect library operations and we need to, and we can use our, um, uh, our firewall system um, to dial back the amount of uh, uh, bandwidth that is, uh, that is available to any given device on our network. Um, and that actually has been working pretty well. Um, I'd also like to call your attention to section three on the restrictions section, uh, which reads parents and guardians have the sole right to decide what is appropriate use for their child subject to library use policy as of February 1st. And this is with respect to uh, using our computers. Um, as of February 1st, 2017, any library user under the age of 17 must receive written permission from a parent or guardian in order to use library computers. The parent or guardian must have reviewed the library's computer and internet use policy and signed and returned a permission form to library staff. Um, this is, I think, a well-meaning part of the policy, and um, but it is not one that we have really used to the fullest extent that I think we envisioned when we put it in place. Um, we have had a, a couple of uh, instances where um, one patron in particular was, you know, was, uh, you know, not to put too fine a point on it, but was was looking at porn on the, you know, the library computers, and it was uh, observed by uh, a staff member, and you know, having uh, the, the policy in place where, you know, we knew what the procedure was there. Um, was something that we wanted to put in place, um, and this this is this that those incidents predate the new uh, this this language that we put in place back in 2016. Um, since then, we haven't had that problem. Um, uh, again, it could happen anytime once we allow people to use the computers again. But um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so by and large, I think it's a good policy. I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a solid policy. Um, it's obviously a, you know, it, it can be a sticky subject, but um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with what we've got in place. Does anybody have any questions about it? Is the policy? Oh, go ahead, Paul. Okay. Okay. Um, since I'm a bit technically challenged, give me a, an example um, in. Number five, um, under restrictions about programs and personal software. So I don't understand that. Oh, I see. Um, <clears throat> um, so one of the things that that you know happens from time to time is that um, uh, people come in and they want to play a game. They want to play Roblox. They want to play my, Minecraft um, or some other video game uh, using our computers. Um, our computers don't have, and that requires the game to be downloaded to our computers. Um, the way that the computers are set up, um, it doesn't allow that to happen except by, uh, except if a staff member um, types in a password that would allow, um, uh, uh, you know, for example, uh, a new application to be, uh, for Roblox or, or Minecraft to be downloaded. Now, 
you know, it, it, it could be the case that in order to, you know, view a certain document, a tax document or something like that, it's, it's sent to, um, to the person in a format that, um, that, that is, is not allowed in the current configurations of the, the, the public computers. Those patrons may come to us and say, I need to open this document, um, but, um, but your, your computer doesn't have a program that will allow me to open it in the format in which it was sent. You know, can I download something? And then we would say, yeah, that's probably going to be okay. We would, you know, figure out what the, what the program is that we would need to download. We would do that. We would plug in the, um, we would plug in the, um, uh, the, the password and that program would be allowed to temporarily live on, uh, our, our public computers. Okay. Thank you. Is that, is that kind of, yeah. okay. Dan, did you have a question? Uh, only if somebody else doesn't have a question first. Okay, I've got two questions then. Um, is this policy, um, when we have it, um, is it currently displayed near the computers for patrons to see or is, um, or is this something that we just assume that they have taken a look at via our website? Right. Um, the uh with with most of our library policies they're not posted publicly some elements of them are uh -huh. so we have signs over by our public computers that lay out for example that patrons may use the computers um for as long as an hour up to twice a day um that they have to sign in that they may not you know download um programs to the computers that anything that they um, okay. don't save on an external device is going to be lost once they stand up and walk away. Okay. Um, it's not the full policy, um, but there's reference in those signs to the, to the full policy. Okay. Um, does that, does that help? Yeah. I was just curious and, and I just didn't know if it ever came up that, you know, that people would ask you, you know, why are you saying I can and can't do this? And mm -hmm. then you have to just quote a policy as opposed to just pointing to a policy and saying our computer policy is right there. I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm just thinking, I'm just trying to, you know, so think we, about. So for some of the, the, some of the policies, our customer behavior policy and our computer and internet use policy, um, we have laminated versions of them that we keep at the okay. desk and we hand them to people if there's a dispute about whether or not they're allowed to do something. Okay. Uh, and then do staff ask age of people that they think are not, are, you know, fall within that realm of, not, are they 17? Are they not 17 kind of thing? No, we don't. Um, we don't. Uh, it is the, you know, the, again, that, that, that gets into a sort of a touchy area. Um, no, it does. I know that's what I was curious about. That's what I yeah. asked the question. So it is something that we could do in general. We, you know, we, we kind of know our, our, our folks pretty well, but if they don't have, a library card and we don't see their you know their personal details come up when they check something out then we may not know and they may be on the cusp they may be you know okay just curious that's all i just didn't know if that was what we were doing or not that's all yeah okay thanks joe anybody else have any other comments or questions so we need to uh pass this policy correct this revision of this policy yes please Okay, can I get a motion to accept the new revised computer and internet policy as Joe described this evening? A motion, Melanie. Melanie motioned and seconded by Deborah. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Abstaining? Okay, we have our updated internet computer policy. Wonderful. Okay, um, we're on to old business, and there are three things to cover in old business. Joe, you know, is, is there any particular order you'd like to do them in? We can go in. Uh, I'll, let, let me do a fundraising update real quick, just because that's, that's the. That's what the you might want to do first. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I don't have too much to add to what I said last um, month, except to say that we have. Um, uh, broken the barrier of $29,000. So $29,000 seems to be about where we're going to finish off this campaign, and that's an amazing place to be. Um, I put in a kind of a long thank you um, and description of the campaign 
in uh, my uh, enterprise column last month or no, last week. Um, but uh, last month, uh, Dan talked about maybe the idea of uh, putting out a, a letter to the editor, um, possibly from you or other members of the, the board, um, you know, saying, you know, saying thank you to our community. Um, and I think that, that would be appropriate. Okay. Then I, I will certainly put something together and send it around for all the board members to make any comments that they would like. And then um, if, if people don't mind having it come from the Altamont Board of Trustees, Library Altamont Board of Trustees, um, then we'll do it that way. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Then I will do that and I'll get that out to people. Okay. Uh, next, maybe we should do the uh, the 2020 annual report. Um, uh, I, I think I gave my oral version of the uh, the annual report at last month's meeting, um, but I, I mentioned at the time that um, I wanted people to take a few, you know, to take their time with it. I, I was late in getting it out to everybody. So if anybody wanted to, you know, take their time, and uh, it is uh, something that needs to be formally approved. Um, one of the things that we talked about in our uh, annual, uh, in our, our core trustee training um, two weeks ago, was um, was the role of the annual report and what you know what what other libraries do with it and what what we can do with it. Um, one of the things that we will certainly do once it is approved is that we'll put it up on the the website. But another thing that we may do is to put it out in some more public fashion um, by you know having it available within the library, having it, you know, be something that we um, give people as they're checking out. Um, other versions of the annual report that um, that other libraries put out were kind of graphics heavy, photograph heavy, um, and, you know, less texty than, than what I've got. Uh, historically, ours has been published in the, uh, in the enterprise. That's how it's kind of been promulgated. Um, and you know, I, I don't. There's there's not a whole lot of stats basically that lend themselves well to um, to, uh, to 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 graphics uh, in the way that other libraries seem to seem to do. Um, but uh, I, I will leave that up to everybody else as to how they want to in what format they want to put that out. So I guess I would just say, um, does anybody have any questions about the um, about the annual report? Well, the one comment that I would make about getting it out to the public is, um, I, I'm I, I'm I'm just hearing how you say we've done this in the past. Um, I see putting it on the web as being a, a logical thing to do. I'm not so sure it's necessary to put it in the enterprise. I mean, do you think that's really something that we need to be doing? I mean, other libraries are not doing that, correct? No, um, but we have a kind of a tradition of doing it. Um, okay. There was, there's a, I don't know, I, I have this, um, this, this, this fest. There was a, um, a person named Millard Whipple. Um, does anybody know Millard Whipple? Has anybody heard tell of this person? Millard Whipple was the secretary uh, of the uh, the board of trustees back in the. Uh, uh, the late 30s uh, into the early 50s, so for a, a long time. And I, I'm not even totally sure whether this is a, a man or a woman. Um, I think it's probably a, a man. Um, uh, but he had a very, very fine writing style. Um, and uh, to go back and, and, and read the annual reports that he put together um, in, the, in the newspaper um, is a real sincere delight. Uh, and um, it's it's nice to have that. It's nice to think that you know um, I, I I I think okay stylist myself, um, and so I, I I like the idea of having that out there in that kind of public format, um, and to maintain that tradition of you know not every not every library has um, a paper like the Enterprise, and so I, I I like the idea of putting it out there like that. Now is this is this part of your column or is this a, a separate article altogether? As it would be I don't a, remember how it appears. Yeah, I, I think it would be a, a separate thing. It would be a okay. separate thing. 
Um, and we can talk to you, Melissa as to whether it would be something that they would charge for. And does she just take it the way you present it to her and just run with that, or does she actually edit it in terms of? Yeah, it would probably be edited down. Um, I don't okay. think that we would need the long narrative section about you know the course of the year and all of the things that we did, but okay. basically the sort of truncate the, the beginning and the end. Okay. All right. Cool. Anybody else have any other comments or questions for? Uh, go ahead, Paul. Um, just a, a, a small correction in the bottom of page three under policy work. That first line is a couple of extra words that I think are um, that shouldn't be there. As uh, <laughs> and expanded. That's all. Let me see. Can you tell me again? It was in the policy work okay. section. Oh, bottom okay. of page three, oh, policy work. Oh, I see the repetition. Yes, I see. Yeah, I, see. I don't mean to be picky, but I'm sure you'd want to. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? All right, then we'll need a vote to uh, to accept it. Okay, a motion to accept the 2020 annual report written by Joe Burke for the Altamont. Public Library. Paul, Dick seconds. Okay, Paul um, makes the motion. Dick seconds. All in favor? Aye. Any abstentions? Aye. Okay, very good. And then you're going to talk a little bit about the core trustee training <clears throat> review. Sure. Um, this was something that we did uh, two weeks ago um, that uh, 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 many members of the uh, the board joined us for and i'm very grateful to everybody who was able to join us um, if you were not able to join us um, there will be additional uh, trainings throughout the year and i will get those dates out to everybody um, that's basically done quarterly um, so i i just kind of wanted to uh there were a couple of things that 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 came up that jogged my memory and i just wanted to have a bit of an open discussion about other people's perceptions and things that you took away from the uh, from the training that you think that we could implement, um, uh, and I already had a very nice discussion with uh, with Paul about his um, uh, his takeaways from the uh, from the training and things that he thought um, were things that we could build into um, our meetings and our 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 library life. So one of the things that um, that I took away from it was this reminder that um, there are things that Oh, we're losing you here. What I just need to have on our website, and I've been a little bit negligent about uh, over the past, I don't know, ever. Um, so long range plan is up on the website that uh, minutes of, uh, of previous meetings are up on the website. Um, there were a few things, uh, so I spent some time uh, building out that section of our website um, that I can show you. Um, it's kind of the, the catch all section that has our policies, information about the board, um, <clears throat> let me just real quick. Um, so I spent some time. So you would find it in the about section under uh, mission board and policies. If you just click on mission board and policies, you'll see the current lineup of the board of trustees, the staff, our hours, etc., cetera, um, our meeting schedule. But then I, I put up our budget, uh, the long range plan. I updated some of the policies. There were a few other things um, that, uh, that I have. Oh, that's cute. Like that. So that was that was uh, that was one thing that um, uh, that I was. Uh, uh, what what about other folks? What did what did other people hear? What did you get? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Oh, well, um, share a thought. Did Paul, do you, it, 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 could you... I'm sorry. Okay. Um... Well, it was just like when I picked up the handbook for the first time, whenever that was a year and a half ago or so, it, 
it's a it's a lot of information to take in for sure um and i realized that you know the uh a good trustee is doing a lot more than that i'm not saying i'm not a good trustee but the perfect trustee has got all you know this, Got their hands on the uh, the fingers on the pulse uh, a bit more than than I do. Um, like some of the things that they mentioned, like attending some of the programs, so you see how they operate. Um, maybe being a little bit more involved in fundraising um, and in community outreach. Um, you know, trying to talk up the library. Uh, there's lots and lots of ideas that um, I will be you know, thinking about and slowly incorporating, possibly. But um, it also just brought home the need, uh, the importance of communication between um, all of us and Joe. Um, and in my case, the need for some gentle reminders occasionally about uh, what we might be doing that, uh, and I think maybe this probably happens already, um, but um, I myself might, could benefit from any little reminder about uh, you know, if, if we have a certain initiative going on um, to, you know, like community outreach, um, to you know, just to get that gentle nudge, um, because it's very easy for me to put all of this on the back burner. You know, that we're all very uh, busy with our lives, and uh, um, so anyway, that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, Joe, uh, I found it very helpful. Uh, the only thing is, it was a little long. Uh, they said it was about 90 minutes, but it was uh, a little more than that. Uh, maybe they could have cut it down a little bit, but they both did a good job and made the explanation really good. And uh, I heard things that I forgot about, and it was very helpful. I'm glad they did it. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Paul. Anybody else? No, I had similar um, takeaways to to both Paul and and Dick. I think for me, um, having the the personal sort of anecdotes um, around the responsibilities and and the role was was very helpful, um, as well as how to be um sort of more active uh, in the community and 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 bringing um word of the library and what we're doing also attending some of the programs um so i, I just thought it was really really well done and and um grateful for you to um organizing it and and getting us together i thought that it was well done Thank you, Deb. Melanie, did you have something? Yeah, I, you know, I, I agree. I, I wasn't real, I was a little skeptical about uh, Zoom training on the libraries for an hour and a half, but I agree it was it was a lot of good information. Um, I did have a question, is this, because I had never gone to it before and I have been on the board for several years and, and it was very helpful now and I think it would have been very, very helpful when I first got on. Um, I, so I just was wondering how often it's it's presented and just curious for the next group of people. It's uh, something that um, that uh, uh, Upper Hudson does uh, a few times a year for trustees and I can uh, make sure that I'm putting out there uh, anytime that uh, those trainings are happening. What we've done in the past and the, the, the last time that we did one of these trainings was I think in 2016. Um, uh, and what we did there was we had them come in and do a training for all of us, and that that's kind of what I've always had in the back of my mind is that we would um, we would and then the the year just gets away. Um, but we would have them out. Um, the last time we did it, we had them out to the yarn shop, uh, and we were all sort of mm -hmm. in that very cozy space um, away from away from the library, and um, we did it on an evening. It was very nice. Um, uh, so I, I, I will be more conscientious about um, putting that out there, those, those kinds of training opportunities um, that uh, Upper Hudson provides. Um, 
from time to time. Yeah, I think it was good how you presented it this time as, I, I don't want to say manager, but highly suggested. You know, that was a good way to, for a new person coming on the board, you know, if you can suggest it kind of that way, it might be helpful too as to here's a training you can do if you're interested type of thing. Yeah, I, you know, and, and I, I try to be conscientious of everybody's time. I know that we're all engaged. We've all got lots of things going on. And so I'm always reluctant Absolutely. to say, you know, you know, you must do this. Um, uh, but I, I do think it's it's incredibly helpful. Um, and so a part of the, you know, part of my reluctance is always that I just want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, one of the things that um, that Paul and I talked about the other day when, when we had this conversation was one of the things that I, I, I used to do, um, and I think I maybe started this in uh, reaction to the last time that we had uh, a core trustee training, which is that uh, in my director's report, I would end each director's report with a couple of talking points that I wanted um, everybody just to be aware of and things that they could talk about um, and have you know ready these little anecdotes or you know bits of news about library programs or things like that things that we've achieved or things that we've done or things that they should be aware of um, and i would include that in each director's report and i would mention it specifically in my oral director's report um, so I, I, you know i can i can certainly go back to doing that um, tim mentioned the uh, uh, the one uh, uh, board of trustees that he was familiar with that um, made it a practice to end each board meeting um, by discussing one big thing that um, all board members would be talking up that month. Um, one piece of news or whatever from um, that they had talked about during the meeting that they would walk away from and uh, from the meeting and in any you know, conversations that they're having with your neighbors or your friends or other community members that you would, you know, be sure to try to bring up. He also brought up the, the, uh, the subject of, or the, 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 um, an anecdote about one library trustee who was, was so zealous about doing this, had such missionary zeal that they would accidentally bump into, um, other people at the grocery store, like run their cart into them and say, oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't see you there. Hey, don't I know you from the library? And then they would, and not, you know, not that they would know them from the library, but, you know, they would take that answer either yes or no and say, oh, that's, you know, that's incredible. I, you know, here's what, here's what, here's what uh, uh, Glendale Public Library is doing these days. Um, I, I would be mortified if I heard about any of you doing that. So please don't, please don't bump into people at the, at the grocery store. Um, however, I think the point is is a good one, um, which is that uh, we can we can all do more, myself included, um, to uh, to 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 get news and information about um, what we're up to uh, out to our, our friends and our communities. And I can help facilitate that in, in you know in any way that I can. Hey Joe, um, obviously I was not there at the core trustee training. Um, was this recorded so that someone like myself could watch it at another time? I think it was recorded. Um, I, I think I remember it, it uh, uh, him hitting record at the beginning, but it is kind of interactive in a in a certain way. Well, I understand and, that, but I mean, would yeah. there be a possibility for someone to view it at their own at their at their own time? I mean, if that is a possibility, and you could find out how one would access it. I would appreciate that if that's a possibility. And if not, I understand that, and and you know that's fine. But I was. Um, that that would be nice. That was an opportunity. I mean, given yeah, this, uh, I mean, Tim may not want people to do it without having the ability to respond directly to people. And okay, so be it. And, I, I will. I will ask him. I will ask Tim and Mary uh, whether they have that recording um, uh, or another canned recording um, of the training. Um, and if I can get that out, then I'll be happy to do that. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll shoot him a note. I'm talking to him tomorrow. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much. Sure. Yeah. But thank you everybody for your time in 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 doing the training. Um, I thought it was great. Thank you. I thought it was helpful. Just one last it, that there was enough of us there that he could make a few comments that were Altamont specific, right? So as if they came specifically to Altamont or the yarn shop, it would have been just about Altamont. So it was kind of nice that we 
dominated. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks for getting everyone in the same meeting, Joe. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, have to say, uh, I did uh, send an email to both of them to thank them for their time and doing this. So uh, I thought it was very good. The only one thing I think I think you talked about how uh, board members are congenial to each other and and I found that uh, on on the board side and worth you know everyone, even though you might not agree with everything but uh, everybody's willing to listen so it's been a pleasure. Uh, the, I I will I will say that that is not the universal experience, um, and we have sure. been. We have been very lucky uh, in the the board members that we've had. Um, uh, yes, other other close friends and and associate libraries have have decidedly not had that experience, um, and I I am always uh, incredibly grateful that we we always have. So. So Joe. Yes, Deb. Quick question, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I'm curious. Um, is there something, um, and you can answer this now or at another time, but um, collectively as a board, is, is, there, is there anything that you would like us to be doing a little bit differently or? Um... I, I should have anticipated that question and, um, and I didn't. The, 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 there's, there's nothing that, uh, that jumps out to my mind, but I think that one of the things that um, maybe uh, I will see if we can start doing, um, uh, not this month, but next month, what I'll do is I will put into each of my director's report those couple of, um, those couple of talking points and maybe the last item on the agenda next month and going forward can be a discussion of amongst those points or amongst the other things that you've heard or talked about or seen that we've been up to what's one thing that we can you know take away um and uh you know bring our our, our missionary zeal to bear uh on our on our friends and associates okay. anybody else have any other comments about the core trustee training review and let's move on to new business then we've got three things to cover um any particular order joe you'd like to go in Sure. Um, let's do. Um, okay. So the the quickest one is going to be changing aud or, uh, auditors within TM Bixby. Um, we uh, decided uh, both in the finance committee and in the the the, the board at large um, a couple of months ago that we were going to stick with our current auditing firm, TM Bixby. Um, we have been very happy with the service that we have gotten from them over the years. Um, they have been our auditors for um, for a number of years, um, and uh, but uh, for the purposes of you know sort of best practices, um, we would like to change the auditors within the firm, our, the, the the principals within the firm um, that are going to be handling our account. Um, Tom Gesick, uh, our new uh, auditor within TM Bixby, who is a, a, a great uh, Altamontian, right around the corner um, from us, uh, has um, has asked us to specifically um, have a board motion in favor of switching our auditor from Glenn Winter, um, who has done a great job for us, to Tom Gessick. So I would like uh, I guess I would need somebody to uh, motion for that. I'll second that. Or, or does anybody have any questions about, oh. about that? I mean, it's something we've talked about before. But... Okay. Uh, and a second? Okay. So, Rachel, that was Dick uh, who made the motion and Deb, uh, Deborah seconded. Okay, and who is the auditor that we're switching to? Okay, so um, we're yes. switching from, yeah, it, it's G-E-S-S-I-C-K. One S or two. Um, what was his first name? Tom. Tom, okay. Thank you. Yeah. 
Uh, do Emilio or browsing, Joe? Oh, uh, sorry, we need a vote. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Okay, all in favor of changing from Glenn Winter to Tom Gessick uh, within the TM Bixby uh, auditing firm? Aye. Anybody opposed or abstaining? Okay, passed unanimously. Thank you very, very much. Okay, um, <clears throat> uh, on to uh, Melio. Melio. Um, Jason Cooper, who I wish was here with us this evening. I thought he was going to be with us this evening. Um, is our bookkeeper and um, has had some personal and professional changes uh, in his life that have made it difficult for him to get out to the library uh, as often as uh, he once used to be able to do. Um, and uh, he's going to be going back to school for his bachelor's, which is great. Um, uh, so what he has asked is, in order to not have to come out to the library uh, in person uh, as often as, as he used to have to in order to cut checks, he would like us to use a, a product called Melio. Um, I included some links in my director's report um, uh, to, to their website and to a, um, uh, a YouTube video that gives a kind of overview of, of how of how Melio, excuse me, works. Um, and the, you know, the upshot of it is that it is a service that allows for online bill paying for um, uh, any of the, the vendors that we use, uh, any anybody that we get an invoice from. Uh, the way that it currently works is that, you know, um, between uh, Jason, Dan, and myself, um, I put the bills together, I assemble the support for those bills. Um, if if there are any questions about them, I you know I answer them with with Jason. Um, and uh, once the the bills are assembled, he comes in. Uh, Jason comes into the into the building about twice a month, and um, then uh, then he and he cuts the checks. Um, and then Dan comes in after that, signs the checks, reviews the checks, uh, and I send them out. Uh, Melio would allow us to do most of those things online. Uh, so uh, basically, um, there would be uh, whenever we get an invoice or a, a, a bill, um, I would um, I would enter those those bills into the the Melio web portal. Dan would review them, and then Jason would approve them for uh, for being sent out. Um, Nobody, Dan, neither Dan nor Jason would necessarily have to come in. Um, my my concerns about this uh, are that it is theoretically possible um, for us to sort of do an end run, maybe for me to do an end run um, around Jason or uh, Dan. I don't know that there are protections within um, w within Melio, and this is why I I wish Jason were here to to talk about this. Um, to make sure that that doesn't happen, that I can't just, you know, input the invoice and then hit send on the check along with uh, an electronic signature. Um, because I think, you know, um, I think that that's, that's a bad, I, I, that, that I think would circumvent the, the, the protections that we have in place and the policies that we have in place about these sorts of things. Um, Jason uh, assures me that that you know that whatever the policy is that we have in place now will still preserve the the checks and balances um, that we have always had. Um, I just haven't seen that myself. I but I, I haven't seen that we don't have that. I don't know one way or the other. I mean, that's just my concern. Whose electronic signature gets put on the checks? I guess it would be yours, Dan. I was gonna say, please don't say mine, okay? Well, it's gonna be whoever can sign the checks. So it's it's either gonna be yours or mine. Hmm. And I know that there is, I, I did find online that there is a required approval level to users in Melia. So I thought that's what he was saying, that there's different, um, I did look that up in FAQ, there, there is a different user level. So I'm assuming that what that means is that you would not have the user level because it would all be by like email and signing in. That was my assumption, but we can definitely double check with him. But who assigns those, uh, but who assigns those permissions? 
I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I promise right. you, I won't, I promise you, I won't do it, but you know, it, it, but if, if I could, you know, reassign those permissions, then, you know, then it's, it's kind of a, a moot, you know, a moot thing. I don't know. So uh, what I guess, what I guess I'd like to do is to get going on it, get going using it and giving it a month uh see how it works see if we can make sure that those 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 checks and balances are in place and that it works for jason then it works for dan and that it works for melanie um and I, you know I'm, I'm i'm open to it i don't you know i don't have a problem with it i just don't want there to be i just don't want there to i just don't want there to be a potential hazard moral hazard there Sure. I think we definitely sounds like we need to either get him to walk us through how the restriction levels are put on and who does that, because I, I guess I'm not clear if it's all set up through QuickBooks, which he's the one that's setting up everything in QuickBooks. So I assume that he somehow set up the approval levels, but mm -hmm. it might be nice for him even just to give us a walkthrough on that, on how it's done. Yeah. Um, Joe, I'm going to make another comment. I, I'm not. I'm not trying to be um, difficult here, but um, I mean, do you get the sense that if we don't do this, that Jason's going to feel like he can't continue to do the job that he does for the library? Uh, it's yeah. It's it's. I'm 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 concerned about that. Huh. Okay. But I I don't I. He hasn't. Yeah, said no, you that. can't speak for him, so that's fine. I, I understand. I, I just, I, I didn't know if he had said anything to you about that. that like, if you know, if we don't do this, I'm going to have to resign the position or something like that. So, no, I, I think it's just he has less time. It's not on his way from his his office to, from his home to his office in the way that it used to be. Um, right. So he, you know, um, and uh -huh. he's he's going to be starting classes. So there's this uh, extra, this additional drain on his time he has not said that he's you know that he he can't do it he normally puts in you know two hours an hour a week or so um on our account and then if you add you know driving to that that's you know probably going to be an additional two hours I mean, he's you know it's going to be it, when, when he gets when he gets in to do the checks he's in and out in 15 minutes. Most of the other work that he does, he does from home. Um, so adding that that additional, you know, trip out there, out to the to the library, is you know, twice as much time as he spends on the actual work. So so yeah. So my concern is that he will just say, you know, nuts to this, yeah. if uh, if we're not able to do this. So, I mean, the thing, going back to what Melanie was just saying, if we said to him, we're, we're, we're still, we just want a little bit more detail, can we <clears throat> continue to have him do what he's been doing for the next month until he can be here to talk to the board or whoever, talk to the finance committee through it? I mean, mm -hmm. do you think that's going to be problematic as well? And, you know, he needs to have it done now, or do you think that's something that he would be okay with? We just need more details. I guess the other question I have is, you know, is it okay? Can we do this as a trial basis, or do we have to sign on for a period of time with this? I mean, no, it there's, it's, it's not a, a, it's not like we're paying a subscription fee or something to it, where we're stuck with, you know, where we're going to be losing some amount of money. I do think it's from everything that I see, it's the sort of thing that we can do for a little while and then stop doing if we no longer need to. Um, I do think that there's going to be a, a a decent investment of time to getting the accounts set up and connected to to QuickBooks, um, getting the electronic signatures all set and all of the permissions set. Um, uh, he does not currently use it. He uses another product called Bill.com, um, which is pretty expensive for his uh, his other accounting library accounting job for the uh, uh, for the Kanjahari Library and Museum. Um, but he doesn't think that, that makes sense for us. Um, so I I don't know I don't know with direct certainty. And again, you know, if you were here, you could say um, 
I think it's partially a, a road that we're going to have to be make by walking in. I don't think that he knows what the, the permission structure is any more than I do um, because he just hasn't encountered it yet, right? I, he, he hasn't set up the accounts and so he hasn't seen what the, what the possibilities are. I, you know, I'm 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 a little I'm I'm reluctant, but I'm I'm willing to 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 go along with it. Uh, at least give him the permission to go ahead and set up the account so that we can start trying to use it, and you know, see if it works. And if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. And All right. Say All right. you know. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I guess I guess the thing is uh, you're you're talking about. You don't know what it's going to involve to set up these accounts and electronic signatures, and and you know we're going to have a change of president in less than a year's time as well, and that's going to you know I just I'm just thinking about all the things down the road, and and um, and I just want to make sure that we don't we don't hastily jump into something that we wish we don't we hadn't done that kind of thing. So, um, but I also don't want to lose Jason because I think he's a very important asset for the library as well. So. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Yeah, I, I think we should, yeah, I, I, I think it probably, I know it, it just hooks up automatically to QuickBooks, um, and it made it sound like the signing was email-based, that Dan, you would get an account, Joe, you would get an account, but I think we should, you know, I can reach back out to Jason and just say, but I, again, you know, we had a couple of questions, but I agree with Joe, is I think we might have to try to set it up and see what it looks like, but it is, I'm assuming it's just online bill paying like you would do with your bank. So if you stopped doing the online bill paying through Melio, you would, he would just continue to do it the way he had been doing it. So it's, you know, I think it's just linking the stuff is that he was what he would need to do, but we could stop because I'm not, but I'm wondering if once he sets that up that he can almost do a screenshot and walk us through here's how you do this, you know, on, on the meeting, here's how you do this and show us from his, share his screen and do it that way even. And it would become a little bit clearer than, uh, that's my thoughts, maybe we could set that up and either do it the finance committee, the next finance committee meeting, um, or, or whole board if we'd like to do it that way. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Do we need to, or do we want to vote to, try it then right because we probably need to vote to to link the accounts to then figure out whether we need to do it is it is what it sounds like yeah i, I think that's right so, so i mean if, if people if people are okay with this then that's that's i guess what i'm i'm asking people to do I guess I, I I mean I I will I will certainly put that motion forward and see if anybody wants to make that motion and second the motion. Um, I just wish I was a little bit more um, a little bit more clear about what exactly is. I mean, because I mean I looked at it, but it, I I'll go back to what Paul said. I'm not real tech savvy either, and um, you know I, I I still mail my checks in with a stamp. Okay, call me a luddite if you want. That's fine. I, I can live with that. Um, but nonetheless, um, I wish I knew a little bit more in as much as I'm going to be putting an electronic signature on things. Um, that's, not, that's just my concern. I think it's a legitimate concern. So, I mean, if, if, we, could, if we could hold off to perhaps after the next finance committee, and maybe uh, Jason could walk us through that at the next finance committee meeting, and then we could go from there. I mean, if he would be okay with that, I I would feel more comfortable about that. But again, I'll defer to the whole board because it's not just me. So, well, then I think you know, since since you know it is at least theoretically going to be your signature on it, and that you have a role to play in it, I think that we do need your you know your your comfort uh, on this before we go ahead with it as a board. Um, so I think I I think that we at uh, absolute minimum need you know. Jason, Melanie, Dan, and myself to all be willing to go ahead with it. And since we don't have that now, uh, why don't we table this and we'll we'll bring it up when they're in the board. Um, that does mean that we will need him to come out and do some 
live checks. Um, so I will be in touch with him tomorrow and uh, I will get that set up. Okay, and then reopening browsing then. Okay, so, uh, you know, I, I, I talk about this in the, the director's report and um, I am of many minds about it. And I'd like to sort of get get your feedback on where you think where you think we are, where you think our community needs us to be. Um, so you know, a couple of you know real good data points recently. Um, the seven day um, average of positive COVID tests in Albany County uh, today is at 2.7, 2.7 percent positive test rate. It's the third day in a row that it has been below three percent. Um, you will remember that uh, our closing down from being uh, open for browsing was triggered by a rise of that rate to above 3%. So now we're back down under it. Um, and that's a, that's a good thing. That's a, you know, the trends are in the right direction. Um, I don't see many people anticipating that that, you know, a, a, um, uh, a, a, a another rise on the horizon uh, imminently. Um, maybe it'll come, I don't know. But, um, you know, so that's 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 real good. And other libraries, the Albany Public Library, uh, uh, other libraries have um, sort of loosened their restrictions um, on in-person browsing or in-person services um, in response to that. Uh, the Castleton Public Library is another one. Um, those are the only two that I know of in Upper Hudson that have uh, that have loosened restrictions so far, but I would anticipate that others will do that in in the coming days and weeks. The competing dynamic, um, you know, is weird, scary new variants on the disease and uh, an increased um, uh, transmissibility um, and additional fears about. Um, uh, about the, the the ease with which the, these new strains are are transmissible, um, I've been seeing more uh, uh, more suggestions um, that um, everybody ought to be double masking. Um, I've asked the entire staff to do that, um, and uh, we have one staff member who um, uh, has uh, who feels that they are there they're not able to do that, that they're not able to breathe um, easily and and work while, while double masking. Um, they offered their resignation um, as a result of that. Um, I told them to hold off on that and that we would um, talk about it and see if we could come to an accommodation. Um, and I'm gonna have a discussion with, with that person um, uh, tomorrow uh, about that. My feeling is that I will probably say, why don't you, you know, take a couple of weeks off, wait until you get yourself vaccinated. Um, at that point, I think a single mask would be acceptable and appropriate, um, but not until then. This is a person with uh, other underlying health conditions um, and other, you know, vulnerabilities. Um, it's also a person that I would hate to lose from the staff. I would hate to lose any member of the staff, um, but this one in particular. So um, it's uh, it's something that I'm thinking a lot about. Um, there is, uh, as you know, um, there are other people on the staff who are, um, who have vulnerabilities and comorbidities, um, but nobody on the staff has gotten um, vaccinated yet. And so there is that, that level of, um, of concern. Uh, that that goes with um, opening up to the public, even on a limited basis, uh, the way that we were um, from uh, September through November. So uh, I I I am of of many minds about this, uh, and um, I just wanted to see what what everybody thought about this. Hey Paul. Mm -hmm. What is the process um, when when we're considering reopening on whatever level? Um, what kind of feedback do we get from the staff? 
And what's, you, what, how do we weigh that? Uh, it's, it's direct feedback that I get from, uh, from discussions that I have with the, the staff. Um, that's, that's basically my feeling them out on, in terms of their comfort level. Um, you know, the, the answer cannot be never, right? The, the answer can't be, um, that we, you know, that we keep doing things in the way that we've been doing them, uh, you know, there, there's always going to be some risk in, in walking out your front door. Um, and, you know, that's, that's something that anybody who does that has to, has to accept. Um, but I, I also don't want to create, um, I don't want to create for the staff a, um, a you know, uh, an anxiety about coming to work because that's going to impact morale. And, um, uh, and you know, as we've already, we've already seen there, you know, we've, we've already had one person who, you know, feels that, um, they, you know, they, they, they don't want to, um, you know, work under this, this, you know, this condition, this, this double masking condition. Um, but on the, the other hand, you know, and, and, and we don't want to create a, um, a, a, a place where community members um, are coming together in the way that they used to come together in the library and recreate and talk and um, and potentially you know spread the disease within the community. So we don't want to do that either. Um, so you know it's it's just it's just it's 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 just conversation and 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 discussion and uh, arriving all together uh, between myself and the staff and you. Um, and our, our users, what the what the what the right level of um, balance is between access and safety. You know, Joe, I just have a, a quick question for you about um, when we did have that brief or that period of the um, the middle period of the appointments, which is yep. our next step to what we would go to. Um, how often were they used? And because I, I did notice on, on the director's report that a lot of our, our our circulation that's low is like the juvenile fiction, like that's been continuously low. Mm -hmm. Did you notice? So I'm just wondering. I'm you know, and I'll very limited my three children. Like uh, for younger elementary, it is obviously a lot easier to pick more books by actually seeing the books. Ordering books online is very tough at that age. Did you see a lot of that population coming in during the appointments? Or I guess how often were the appointments, who was coming, that type of thing? At the time it was more individuals than families. Um, it was um, the uh, the toys aren't going to be back and so it's it's right. not, you know, and uh, the, the, the time period would be limited um, that people could you know, could stay. So it's not, you know, it's not Candyland the way it used to be. Um, the, you know, there, there are some people who, uh, for whom, you know, the dinosaurs and the Legos are, are the, the important thing that, and the, the, you know, the, 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 the books are, are a sideshow. Um, and we love those people. Um, and they're, you know, they're, our, they're, they're some of our, our, our favorite, <laughs> our favorite people. Um, yeah, you know the uh, the the circulation is not something that I'm I'm worried about. I, you know the circulation is what it is, but it's you know something that that Katie mentioned uh, in the long range planning meeting has uh, has really stuck with me, which was that um, that Altamont uh, amongst the Gilderland Public Schools um, has the the lowest uh, reading scores. Uh, elementary age reading scores, and you know, and uh, you know that that was maybe you know Katie can can speak more to this than than I can, uh, but you know that's that's something that we need to respond to. I mean, and and that's not helped by our being close to the public. Um, right. It's you know it's being open the way that we used to be open with toys and with programs um, and with you know unlimited visit time is you know is step eight and we're at step 1.5 right um but we're, we're getting there we, we i mean we have to get there we have to get there 
I guess the thing is you want to just make sure that if we're at 2.7 now and we go up to 3.1 for whatever reason next week, you want you don't want to be flip-flopping back and forth either between opening and closing because then you're going to really frustrate the public if you do that. Strongly agree. I mean, the thing is it might make more sense just to, you know, let's hope these numbers continue to go down and let's just let them have a little bit more time to follow that trajectory and then then we might be able to actually see you know the light a little bit more clearly about what's happening down the road as opposed to because we want to get open let's open now because we're below three when we're not that far below three so anyway right so why don't we say I, this uh, oh i'm sorry go ahead catherine i was just gonna say i agree with just kind of riding it out for the next you know six or eight weeks and letting more people get the vaccinations and seeing how the very uh the variants play out um, it just doesn't feel like it's securely under control yet. And it is a vulnerable community, um, you know, just with older people and it would make me worried, I guess. Yes. We've brought this up. I, I know I've we've asked this before. Um, are, is there a lot of requests for it? Because you've always said that there isn't too many, too many requests for the browsing. Right, that there'd be a question here or there. No one's pounding down the door. Is that still true? It's weird. It's it's it's. Um, I think people are very respectful of the fact that we are doing what we are doing, and that we are doing what I, I think that everybody. I think that people um, take it for for granted uh, that 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 we are doing what we feel is best for. The, the 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 staff and for the community and they are willing to give us the um you know the the benefit of the doubt that if we say you know it's it's not safe to to to, to reopen yet then it's probably not safe to reopen yet and i think that's i hope that's right i think that's right um i think that we've we've earned that you know that credibility over time um so when when people talk about you know browsing, it's in this this heartbreakingly like wistful like you know I, I you know and, and I've I've heard this from 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 lots of you. Um, it's it's in that in it's it's in that way that says like you know I wish I wish I could come back in. I wish you know I wish it could be like it was. I wish you know I wish the book club could meet in person. And it's not like that demanding sort of expectation of uh, things being back to that now or soon. Um, I haven't had anybody, you know, sort of point their finger in my face and say, you know, I pay your salary, um, you know, open these doors. Um, I demand, you know, I demand access. I haven't, you know, we haven't had anything close to that. Other libraries have. Um, but we've had that we, we we've had that like that kind of you know um, I wish I wish it was I wish it was better I wish we could come in that kind of thing. Well, and that's not going to be satisfied by appointment by browsing, right? I mean, no. no. No, the only I do I think at least like waiting it out. I think a lot of stuff's so up in the air right now. Um, but I I also think even when we move to the appointment browsing. <laughs> that wasn't bringing this crazy slew of people. Um, and I think, it, and I get it, it's like so scary right now. And, but I think the way browsing went, there people signed up, they're in for 15 minutes. Um, it's done in as most of a safe way as you could possibly do it. So at least it's, it's not all or nothing. Like when eventually it's opened up, it doesn't just go to everybody can come in and conjugate. It's, it's slow and steady, but I also think there's a lot of unknowns right now as a teacher that's still like waiting to get vaccinated. Um, I call today, there's no appointments, um, but you just keep hoping that they say it's coming, <laughs> um, you know? So it's, it's hard to know even what that means. Like we're all hopeful, but we also don't know, you know, if Johnson and Johnson gets approved or CVS starts to roll them out. Um, 
But I do think at least, even if we wait a bit to make sure it's going to stay below 3%, at least when it opens up, it's not, I felt like it was structured in a way and it wasn't being, if I remember correctly, you had people coming, but it wasn't, there wasn't 30 people a day in the library. You know what I mean? It was definitely just. It was, also, uh, you know, if, you take, if you take what Catherine said about, you know, maybe waiting eight weeks, eight weeks gets you to, uh, you know, well into April. Now you can have the front and back door open as well and have airflow going through the building when people are coming in. And they're going to feel a whole lot more comfortable about that than walking to a building with, with static air, no matter what our air cleaning system is like. So I, I can tell you for sure that uh, one of our staff members still does open the doors uh, first thing when they come in. Uh, for their shift, and so uh, you know, and we can only do that for a little while. But you know, and they when they're when they're replacing somebody on the desk, they want to you know they want to move the air around. Sure. And so um, and so I, I can tell you that that um, that there are you know there are staff members for whom the ability to just open up the doors is going to make a huge difference. Yep. Uh, and so I, I I think that that makes I think that makes good sense. Although I will say that I, I I feel you know I feel good about the the level at which the um, the HVAC system is working, um, you know there's there's a you know you you can feel you can feel it working you can hear it working, um, and that's you know I I, I and it it I, I'm 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 pretty happy with the the degree to which um, that is moving the air through the building. Um, and uh, so that's that's a good thing. Does anybody else have any thoughts, any comments about this? All right. Um, so let's say this. Um, uh, as I mentioned, it's the third day that we're under um, that we're under uh, three percent. Um, so. Let's keep an eye on that, and um, uh, I don't know. I don't know if we want to make a benchmark or if we want to say let's just revisit the you know the discussion uh, at the next meeting. Whether we want to say you know at, at the point at which we're under three percent for two weeks or three weeks or four weeks or whatever it is, or whether we just want to come back and you know revisit the question next time that we we all meet. That's that's your discussion or that's your decision I'm certainly inclined to think we just talk about it again at the next board meeting as opposed to setting up something that's somewhat artificial at this point in time so because we're all just guessing at this point in time so yeah I don't know whether you feel the same way or not I, yeah. I, agree. I agree with that okay, okay. So if we say two weeks, yeah we're almost at the next meeting okay we've been waiting for three weeks then it's then we're almost there. So, right. Okay. All right. I'm I'm happy with that. Um, does anybody else have anything else to to say on that point? Okay. Well, thank you guys for all of your your your, your thoughts and your your consideration on that. Well, thank you, Joe, for everything you're doing for the library. Does yes. anybody have anything else that might be considered new business? If not, can I get a motion to adjourn for this evening? So move. <laughs> Thank you, Dick. Seconded. Thank you, Deborah. All in favor? Thank Aye. you so for your time this evening. Stay safe. See you next Thank time. Thank you all. Bye, all. Thank Bye. you. Bye.